with today's lesson, we're beginning a new unit and a new module. Our unit is going to be on Unit 5, which is on measurement geometry. And module 12 is called the Pythagorean Theorem. And in 12.1, we're going to learn about the Pythagorean Theorem. And our goal with this lesson is to understand the parts of a right triangle and use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of the missing side of the triangle. Now, one thing that you have to understand about the Pythagorean Theorem is that we can only use the Pythagorean Theorem with a right triangle. So we're going to go ahead and talk about right triangles and label the parts and what they are and what they are indicate, indicators of. So I have a picture of a triangle here. Now what we need to understand is that this is not a right triangle just yet. In order for it to be a right triangle, we need to have this little square in the corner here. So it's this square in the corner that tells us that we have a right angle here and if we have a right angle then we know we have a right triangle as well so once we see this diagram that that uh, box in the corner that tells us we're dealing with a right triangle now if my HRW doesn't have that box in the corner uh, then we just kind of hope and assume that they are uh, giving us a right triangle to work with now that we have um, our right triangle we want to talk about some of the parts and pieces that make up a right triangle. Now, our right angle is right here, and here is the side that is opposite of the right angle. Notice that this side right here, it doesn't actually touch the right angle. These two sides, they form the right angle, but this third side does not touch the right angle at all. And that third side has a name, and it's called the hypotenuse. So again, this longest side here that doesn't touch the right angle at all is called the hypotenuse. And we represent the hypotenuse with the letter C. And you'll see that in the formula we're going to learn in just a moment. But the hypotenuse is the side opposite of the right angle, so it's this side here. And it will always be the longest side of the triangle. Okay, so if you're using the Pythagorean theorem and you're trying to find the hypotenuse, and you're finding out that your side is not the longest, then something may have gone wrong. All right, so that's the hypotenuse. Now, in addition to the hypotenuse, we also have these two sides of the triangles here. They are the sides that actually form the right angle. And it's a weird name for them, I realize, but those are actually called the legs. And again, those are the two sides that form the right angle. So our definition for the legs, uh, we use the letters A and B to represent the legs. And those are the two sides of the triangle that form the right angle. So again, it's this side here and this side here. Those are the two sides that form the right angle. So those are the legs. Those are represented by A and B. Now when we're, when we're actually labeling our diagram, it doesn't matter if this is side A and this is side B, or if this is side B and this is side A. As long as the two legs are labeled as A and B, it doesn't matter their order. What does matter is that we always have our longest side, the side opposite the hypotenuse, as side C. Okay, so A and B can be switched around, but side C must always be the longest side of the right triangle. Now here's why we're actually going through and doing this lesson. The Pythagorean Theorem can help us find the length of a missing side of a right triangle. So let's say that we knew the length of side B here and side A here. We could use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of side C. Or if we, need, if we knew the lengths of C and B, we could use it to find the length of A. Or if we knew C and A, we could use Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of side B. So this has a lot of applications as far as buildings and uh, making sure that you have right angles when you're uh, putting up a, a fence or different things like that where you need to have a right angle. Anytime that you need to have, right, have a right triangle, a right angle, you can use Pythagorean Theorem in order to make sure that you have a right angle in your measurement. And so the actual Pythagorean Theorem is going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So again what we're going to do is if we have measurements for two of these three sides we'll substitute those values in for a, b, and c. Whichever two values we know we'll substitute those in for the variables that we have here. And then we'll do, we'll do some math, we'll do some algebra in order to find the length of the third val variable. Alright, so just a, a note for you. 
It says for a right triangle with legs of lengths A and B and hypotenuse of length C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You can use it to find the length of a side of a right triangle when the lengths of the other two sides are known. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of how we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a missing side of a right triangle. For this first example, we're given a right triangle, and again we know it's a right triangle because of this square in the corner. And in this right triangle, we know two of the measurements. We know one measurement is five centimeters, the other measurement is seven centimeters. And we want to use the, these two measurements in a right triangle to find the length of our missing side over here. Now first thing that we need to do is we need to determine what variable we want to assign that missing side. Are we going to use A or B or are we going to use C? In order to ask, in order to determine that we need to figure out are we trying to find the length of one of the legs or the length of the hypotenuse. Now we see here that these two sides form the right angle. Therefore we know that these two sides are the legs and this side is opposite of the right angle, meaning it must be the hypotenuse. So we're going to go ahead and label this side with a C. Okay? So our, our Pythagorean theorem again, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my values here, 5 and 7, and substitute those in for A and B. Now it does not matter if I substitute 5 in for A and 7 in for B or if I substitute 5 in for B and 7 in for A. It doesn't matter because both those lengths are the legs and A and B represent the legs. I usually put the smaller value in for A. I don't know why it's not right or wrong. It's just my, just my preference. You can substitute the values in however you see fit. Again, as long as you're substituting the value of the legs in for A and B. So I'm going to substitute 5 in for A. So I have 5 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to square the values that I know. 5 squared is 25 plus... 7 squared is 49, and that's still going to be equal to c squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my 25 and 49 together. So I add 25 and 49 together to get 74 is equal to c squared. Now way back toward the start of the year, we talked about what we needed to do in order to get rid of of our second powers. If ever we have a second power and we want to get rid of it, we have to use the opposite operation. Well, the opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. So in order to get rid of the second power here, I'm going to go ahead and have to square root that side. Okay, that will allow me to cancel the square root in the second power and leave me with just c is equal to. But remember, if I square root the right side, I also have to square root the left side, okay? Now, if the textbook or if the um, my HRW is looking for an exact answer, the square root of 74 would be your exact answer. However, if it's looking for an approximation, you would go ahead and, and approximate. You can use your calculators for this, okay? And this is one where I'm giving you the green light to go ahead, use your calculators. Um, I'm not sure if my HRW is going to want you to estimate to the tenths place or to the hundredths place. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'll go ahead and estimate to the hundredths place. I would be okay with the tenths place, but if my HRW is expecting you to estimate to the hundredths place, then let's go ahead and do that. So we go to our calculator, we enter the square root of 74, and we get 8.60. Okay, 8.60. And we do need to use our labels since we were dealing with centimeters over here. We're still dealing with centimeters in our answer. Okay, so the length of this side here of our hypotenuse is going to be about 8.6 centimeters. And that makes sense. We said earlier that our hypotenuse must be the longest side of a right triangle. 8.60 is greater than 7, is greater than 5. 
Therefore, we can assume, we can presume that 8.60 is the correct answer. Now, there is a way that you can kind of make sure that you're getting your answers close. One thing I want you guys to be aware of, the length of the hypotenuse cannot be greater than the sum of these two sides. Okay? The length of the hypotenuse could not be greater than 12. Okay? 5 plus 7 is 12. If you make a triangle with those measurements, um, you cannot get a length longer than 12 here. That just wouldn't work for a triangle. So, we know that the length of our hypotenuse must be less than 12, but greater than 7. All right, and 8.6, 8.60, that makes sense. That works for this problem. All right, so that's an example where we have to find the length of the hypotenuse. Next, let's take a look at an example where we have to find the length of a leg of the right triangle. All right, so here we have another right triangle. Our longest side of this triangle is going to measure 15, let's say 15 inches. And our other side is going to be 13 inches. We want to find the length of this side here. First, we need to figure out which variable we want to use for that. We know it's going to be a leg because it's one of the two sides that makes up the right angle. It looks like it's going to be the shortest one, so I'm going to use A. Okay? So, our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to substitute in, well, we're not going to substitute anything in for a. For b, now we need to make a choice. Are we going to substitute in 13 for b or 15 for b? We know that 13 is the other leg because it's, still, it's one of the sides that makes up the right angle. So we're going to substitute 13 in for b. So we have 13 squared, and it's going to be equal to 15 squared. All right. Now, next step, we go ahead and we square our values that we know. We don't know what a squared is yet, so we bring that down. Now, 13 squared is going to give us 169. That's going to be equal to 15 squared, which is 225. Now, our goal here, we're trying to solve for a in this case. That means we need to get a squared by itself first. In order to do that, let's subtract 169 from both sides. These will cancel, and we get a squared is equal to, a squared is equal to 56. Now, in order to find the value for a, we square root the left side. That'll cause the square root and the second power to cancel. Leaving, with, leaving us with a is equal to, remember if we square root the left side, we square root the right side as well. So the square root of 56 will be about 7.48 inches. And that's our answer. Okay? Makes sense? Because this side here is less than this side here, but if we add these two sides together, it's greater than 15. Okay, so 7.48, that's an answer that makes sense for us. All right, so we've gone through an example where we find the length of the hypotenuse with example one, and then in example two, we will go over an example where we find the length of a leg when we're missing that measurement. So that's our lesson on 12.1a, the Pythagorean theorem. And our goal, understand the parts of, the right, of a right triangle. Again, that's just the right angle the two legs, and the hypotenuse. And then use the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem being a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find the length of the missing side. So if you're missing one side of a right triangle, you can find that missing side using Pythagorean theorem. I know it was only two examples. We'll go over another example tomorrow in class just to make sure that we're good with how to do these problems. Write down any questions or concerns you have, and we can talk about those in class tomorrow.